Hi, I'm Jim Pence, and welcome to See the Light's Joy of Art. You remember a few weeks ago, we experimented with some watercolor techniques by doing some overlapping mountains. And uh, we're going to continue with that this week, but I told you we would do a different picture. And uh, so this week we're going to work on actually drawing or painting a picture of the three crosses with some mountains in behind. It's a really easy little painting to do and it'll let you practice some of those techniques and that's uh, you know I've always felt and found that uh, if I'm actually painting something rather than just doing exercises it's a lot more fun. So uh, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, today we're not going to get through the entire painting. It would make uh, this segment way way too long. Uh, so uh, today what we're going to do is, is sketch out our basic drawing and uh, then we will do the sky very quickly because the sky is a nice wet and wet wash and uh, that's going to go fast and then uh, next week we'll come back in and do the mountains and hills uh, and, and the three crosses. Now uh, what I've done here is I've already drawn a sketch of the three crosses, the hill and the mountains and I did that so that uh, you could print out a copy for yourself if you'd like to. Uh, if you'll check uh, on the, this uh, web page, blog page, you'll see that there's a link to a PDF file that you can download uh, this very sketch. I scanned it in for you and uh, so that'll give you something you can hold in your hands and hey if you want to even trace it I won't tell anybody. Uh, but I'm going to show you how I did it and then uh, we'll work on doing the sky. So I'm going to switch this out for a plain piece of watercolor paper that I haven't done anything on yet. Now there are two ways to do this. Uh, I'm, I'm using a uh, Sharpie uh, fine tip marker. Um, the reason I'm doing that, there are a couple reasons. One is uh, I, I want you to be able to see the lines better as I draw them. Uh, the other reason is uh, I kind of like the pen and ink look and this is really what this amounts to is, is sort of a combination or a mixed media uh, that would be called pen and ink. So I'm going to draw my lines uh, with uh, the pen but then I'm going to um, you know, paint over and uh, because the Sharpie is permanent then uh, it won't uh, disappear. Now if, if, you, if you don't want the lines uh, use a very hard pencil uh, or you can use just a regular number two pencil but just don't press down very hard as you as you draw your lines in and uh, then uh, sometimes uh, the lines will almost dissolve just as you paint with them uh, or you know you can come in very lightly later with a kneaded eraser and, and remove them but uh, I'm going to uh, do the do the the uh, permanent pen. Uh, part of the reason I uh, like to do this uh, is it gives me just a, a nicer feel for the lines that I'm working with and um, again I just I just like the look. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, and you have if you are using the Sharpie you've got to be really careful uh, because uh, this ink is permanent so if you make a mistake you won't be erasing that mistake. So uh, when you're drawing your lines in, uh, you may still want to do a really light pencil sketch and then just go over them with the Sharpie. But I'm going to throw caution to the wind and, and uh, paint on a, a completely clean surface here. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually place in, uh, let me put it, the sample here. Uh, normally I go back to front. Um, so I will draw the things that are farthest away first and then come closer uh, to the front. And that's most of the time that's the way you want to do this. But uh, I'm going to actually draw in the mountain first or, or Cross Hill Calvary first uh, and then uh, we'll come back and draw in the other ones. And the reason for that is I want to make sure that when I do my mountains I don't accidentally draw those mountain lines too far and not leave myself enough room for the hill. So uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start up here and just kind of come down and give a nice jagged line that's going to come out here and just go across the paper like that. Okay, that's not too difficult is it? Uh, 
now that I have established my, my hill, I'm going to take another line and I'm going to just draw a distant mountain. And then I'm going to draw another one just a little bit more distant. And another one even more distant. And I might even pull in a line like that just, just for fun. Um, and you can you can play with this and do as much as you want uh, but we've got a basic set of lines here okay so next I'm going to kind of embellish my other hill my cross hill here by just drawing some extra lines to make it look a little craggier you know look a little rockier you can overdo this I'm not trying to put in a lot of detail I'm just wanting to make it look a little bit more substantial. And I'm going to just keep drawing these lines down here. I'm going to throw one or two in there. And then I'm going to, I forgot one thing, I'm going to draw one more horizontal line over here. I've left enough room, thankfully. Hope I didn't mess you up on that one. I'm going to draw a little bit more of a foreground contour there. Uh, so, you know, you can you can dink with this all day long. Uh, I'm going to draw one more line here that's going to kind of go up this way, give us a feel for a little of the land on the hill, and just a couple more lines, just to make things interesting. Okay, then I'm going to do my three crosses. Uh, now, a lot of times when you see people draw three crosses, they'll tend to draw them like this. You know, just kind of three crosses on a hill. And that's okay, but, you know, to make it a little bit more visually interesting, why don't you do one cross, which would be Jesus cross, straight on. And I'm going to come down here a little bit, and I'm going to put that one at an angle. And then I'm going to come up here a little bit, I'm going to put that one at an angle. And it, you know, it, it just makes it a little bit more visually interesting. That's one thing that you want to always shoot for is uh, get variety. Don't, don't do things all the same all the way across. So with that in mind, I'm going to come back here to my drawing. And I'm going to place my first cross right here. Don't make them too big. Remember, they have to be in proportion to the, to the hill. Okay, and I am in this one... I'm even going to make this one at a bit of an angle. Okay. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to draw this one this way. And I'm going to come over here and draw that one that way. Now you, you'll notice they look to be different lengths. Well, part of the reason is, you know, we're down here. Our viewpoint is down here at the bottom and we're looking up to that hill. And so that hill's blocking some of that cross and even a little bit of this cross. Uh, so that's why they look shorter than another. So uh, uh, if, you, if you watch our videos with uh, Pat Nepley, uh, she'll teach you how to work with perspective. And that's kind of what we're dealing with here is, is sort of perspective, uh, looking at the place where we're standing as we look up at that cross hill. Okay, now we have our drawing in very simple very basic line drawing not a lot of detail and uh, today we're going to just do the sky and then we're going to be done now I've got a, a really nice size uh, brush here this is a uh, one inch um, flat brush and, and the reason I like to use this for doing big washes is it's going to let me get my color in quickly okay so I'm just going to load the brush up with water and I'm going to come, and the other reason I like a nice flash, a flat brush if, if I have mountains or something like that in here, you know, this lets me go along the edge of those mountains and not get water where I don't want it. Okay, so I'm coming up here, I come up on the edge of the hill very carefully. I'm going to paint over the crosses because the sky color will not affect them at all. That's the nice thing about using this... Uh, Sharpie marker for my lines. Okay, they're gonna paint's gonna just go right over those and not gonna make a difference. Okay. Okay, remember when you do the watercolors and put on water for a wet and wet wash, 
I'm looking for glistening, but I'm not looking for puddles. Okay, I'm having to move it so that I can have my light reflect off of it enough so that I can see if that's about the right consistency and it is so I'm done with that brush now and now I'm going to go to a round brush this is a number 10 round okay and I'm going to load up my brush with cobalt blue I come over here yes you can't see that real well I'm moving down there no, you still can't see it oh well I'm using the lid of the uh, watercolor pan to be my color mixing place. Okay, I've got a really strong mix. I'm going to bring that down so you can see it really quickly. Got a really nice, intense mix of blue there, cobalt blue. I'm just going to come in. I remember what we said about skies the other day is that the sky, if you look at the sky, it's going to be darker the higher you look. Okay and it's going to get lighter as you go down. So I'm putting my strongest color in here at the top. It's coming in fast. Okay, I am leaving some white space here and the reason I am is because I want kind of a cloudy effect. It's really easy to do and a lot of fun. I think I enjoy doing wet and wet more than just about anything. Okay, I'm just going to leave some clouds there. Okay. Turn this over a little bit. Okay, I'm going to come up here and clean out my brush for starters. And then dry the brush out a little bit. And then I'm going to come alongside here. There's some places where some of the color has puddled in. And I'm going to pull just a little bit here. A little bit down closer to the hill. Now if you want to you can come in with just this is just a dry baby wipe and if you want to define your clouds a little bit more I'll come in and blot out a little bit again don't don't overdo it okay and I'm looking for other puddles I'm going to come down here on the mountain line there are a couple of places where the color hasn't quite gotten where it needs to be where the water hadn't quite gotten to be where it needs to be. Okay, and you'll notice right here there's a little water that has gone over into the mountain. That's not a really big problem, but while it's wet I am going to again take a little corner of a baby wipe and I'm just going to go in and blot that out. Okay, I've got a little up here. Okay, well the paint is still wet. That's a nice thing about watercolors. They are pretty forgiving. If you, you know, work quickly you can get just about everything out plus uh, when I do go back in and paint again uh, the mountains then uh, you know, most of that blue will disappear uh, so there you have it just real simple we did our sketch we did our sky and uh, next week we're going to come back in and do the hills and uh, finish this off and you'll have an awesome uh, awesome picture so that's all today for uh, the joy of art working with watercolors and uh, I hope you enjoyed it now go try it for yourself, and remember the most important thing is to have fun. Uh, this is Jim Pence for See the Light, and I'll talk to you next week.